Hey, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Daniel, what's that? Uh, this. Uh, this is a cat. And I see we have a rock over there. What do you have, Sam? It's a human baby. <laughs> How might we categorize these things? Well, the world doesn't come labeled with categories. Uh, we have to figure them out. Uh, but I'm going to go with the following preliminary hypothesis, and it is a hypothesis or a theory, namely that the world is divided up into animate versus inanimate objects. That makes sense. There are certain sciences for the rock, uh, geology, for example, but also straight physics, if I put the rock in motion. Uh, for animate things, there's a different science. We need a different theory, uh, biology. Yep, as Ernst Meyer, a leading evolutionary biologist known as the Darwin of the 20th century notes, number four on your handout, all biological processes differ in one respect fundamentally from all processes in the inanimate world. They're subject to dual causation. In contrast to purely physical processes, these biological ones are controlled not only by natural laws, but also by genetic programs. This duality fully provides a clear demarcation between inanimate and living processes. Okay, so the rock, uh, the rock is out. Um, uh, the cat and the human are the same uh, in that they're uh, animate. Uh, how else might they be the same? Or how else are they the same? Well, they're the same in a lot of respects. Uh, they're both alive, they both have backbones, they both have kidneys, they both have a heart. They both have kind of what seems like arms and elbows. They both have social systems. They both have reproductive systems. They both have neurons, visual systems, caretaker systems, exactly two eyes, exactly two ears, one nose, one mouth. But there's also at least one difference. Uh, besides the tail, uh, the, key <laughs> the key difference for us would be... What is it? Well, it would be that this baby, uh, but not the cat, uh, loosely speaking, has language. That is, the baby is born with the capacity to develop a linguistic system, so this baby, if all goes normally, will develop knowledge of language. So the hypothesis is babies have the capacity to develop a linguistic system, and now we have an important question. How do we pursue this hypothesis? How can we investigate this further? Um, astrology? Tarot cards? Write a poem? Uh, I could write a song. Literary criticism? Maybe. Could we use the methods of science? Why not? Um, <laughs> I'm willing to say that humans uh, are part of the natural world. I'm willing to say that language is a property that is a part of humans and not cats. Uh, so a language understood as a property of humans is an object of the natural world open to scientific investigation. Okay, so looks like what we're doing is comparative developmental biology. Uh, different genetic structures give rise to different capacities, and that would include cognitive capacities in different organisms. Language in humans, but not in cats. So linguistics from this perspective uh, is biological. It's something about humans and we can use the methods of science to find out more. Are we saying that any other way of looking at it is unscientific? No, and it's critical that we be very clear from that.